Hey, so somebody asked me to do a video on orthorexia, and I think her specific question was, if a person has recovered from anorexia, then can they still have orthorexia, and does that mean that they're fully recovered, and things like that. Well, let's start with what orthorexia is. So orthorexia, obsession with overly healthy eating, and I generally think that orthorexia is just a part of anorexia. I think it's a neural setup of anorexia. I think that, well, I've never met a person with anorexia who doesn't also have orthorexia to some extent. And of course, everybody's different. So some people have really extreme orthorexia. Some people don't have extreme as extreme orthorexia. It's just kind of a bit of a niggle that's there. Um, but I've, I've not met a person with anorexia who doesn't have often an aversion to eating foods that are considered as high fat or unhealthy or high sugar or actually just whatever unhealthy means. Um, I've also met people with orthorexia who are not diagnosed or thought of to have anorexia and I've talked to them for three minutes and been like, I think you have anorexia. Because the only reason that they have not been diagnosed with anorexia is because their body weight is not low, low, low. and if you understand that a person can have anorexia in any size body, then suddenly all the lines between orthorexia and anorexia get a bit less distinct, don't they? It's about dietary restriction a lot of the time. Weight loss, it's almost like I think orthorexia can be just a different diversion that the brain has taken to explain to them, why am I restricting these types of food? Because we're all different. Um, most people who are, whom I've met with orthorexia also have an exercise obsession or some kind of um, compulsive element to movement as well. So I think that the two things are expressions of the same thing <laughs> to start with. Now, what if a person recovers or in other words, gains weight after with having anorexia and they do so without challenging any of the orthorexic tendencies. So they gain weight on a restrictive, healthy diet. I would then argue that that person is not fully recovered because the neural pathways in their brain are still in place that tell them to restrict certain types of food and tell them that food is good and bad and all of that judgment around food. So I think it depends on what you think recovery is. If you think recovery is gaining weight, then I guess that you could say that a person with orthorexia is recovered from anorexia. If you think that recovery is not just gaining weight, that's crucial, but if you think that recovery is also losing all of the restrictive tendencies around food, all of the anxieties, all of the food rules, all of the rituals, all of the OCD, all of the compulsions, including exercise or anything else, if you think that that's recovered, then a person who has orthorexia hasn't recovered, they've just put on weight and kept all of the rules and restrictions and things like that. So I think that that's also one of the reasons that people who have recovered um, on restrictive meal plans and overly healthy eating diets and balanced meal plans and all of that crap, if somebody has recovered, supposedly, by those means, I think that it just means that they've put on weight and the neural pathways of anorexia are still in place. And therefore, it's no big surprise that people who have recovered that way and still have all of these neural pathways in place, relapse, <laughs> inverted commas again, because they never really recovered, right? They're more likely to relapse and often do, and often find that they can hold on to their, their, um, the weight that they gained for a little while, but then after a while, just those restrictive tendencies get more and more and more. The compulsive exercise gets more and more and more, and they start to slide back down. And I know all about that because I did that little cycle for years, I would try and gain weight via eating restrictively. And when I say restrictive, you can be eating a huge quantity of food and still restricting certain foods and trying to eat overly healthy. I, gain, I could gain weight and I would gain weight for a bit and then I would gradually slide back down and my restriction would increase and my exercise tendencies would increase. That's because I wasn't challenging the neural pathways. I was keeping the anorexia neural pathways still intact. Okay, so here's an important aspect to consider to this. You can be eating a large amount of food and still restricting. So if I am eating, I don't know, I could be eating 20,000 calories a day, but if I'm eating 20,000 calories a day of foods that anorexia likes and that fit into the orthorexia um, food set, 
I'm still restricting. I could be eating all of those foods, but if I really just wanted to eat donuts and burgers and fries, I was still restricting despite the fact that I was eating a large amount of calories. And because I'm still restricting, I'm still keeping the neural pathways of restriction there in my brain. And they will stay there until I challenge them, until I um, push past that fear of not restricting and I actually eat the food that I'm craving. And I think it does come back down to listening to and trusting your own body because <laughs> my brain was telling me, my anorexia brain was telling me that I needed to eat healthily fruit and vegetables, only healthy fats and all that bullshit. And my body was saying, I want donuts and burgers and fries and pizza, and especially sweet things like chocolate. That's what my body was telling me. And guess what? My body knew better. And the whole time that I was resisting what my body was telling me and thinking that I knew better, I was not getting healthy. I was not getting well. And so I think that we, the orthorexia tends to jump onto, well, what's nutrition science saying? And what's all of these external influences that aren't actually my body? What are they telling me? And I'll believe all of them, every single one of them, I'm going to believe before I actually listen and believe my own body. Well, your body is in there. Your body's there. It knows what it's lacking. It knows what it needs. And so a huge part of recovery is saying, I'm going to lose my judgment. I'm going to lose my judgment over whether donuts are good or bad for me. And I'm just going to eat a fucking donut because that's what I want. And maybe I won't just eat one. Maybe I'll eat the whole packet. And maybe then I'll go and eat another packet. Because if that's what my body is telling me to do, then that's the right thing to do. No judgment, no negotiating, no ifs or whats or buts or whens. Just doing what your body asks you to do. The thing is, is that restriction is restriction is restriction. And orthorexia is restriction. But, you know, like all of that aside, there's something more to orthorexia as well. And that's that it makes you boring as fuck. It really does. Getting all obsessed with being healthy all of the time. I would know because I had that and I was absolutely boring as fuck when I had that. And it just places so much limits on what one can actually say yes to and do. Somebody says, do you want to come down the pub for a drink? And you're all starting to already worry about, oh, well, there's alcohol. And of course, with the person with anorexia, there's calories and alcohol. But then the orthorexia tendency is, oh, well, that's just not good for me. And you know, what's it going to do to my system and X, Y, and Z? Or if somebody says, do you want to come out for a meal? And you're so severely limited in where you can actually go because do they serve organic food at that restaurant? can't go there if they don't you know like is it a vegan restaurant is it gluten-free what do they put in their bread how do they make this sauce has it got non-gmos it's all restriction really and it's boring as fuck and you know what people get sick of it people they won't a lot of people won't tell you that they're sick of it but a lot of people don't want to you to go on about it unless you get all, and which is what I wrote my book Love Fat about basically was you join these diet plans, don't you, of people who are also obsessed with non-GMO or gluten-free or whatever your orthorexic tendency is. You join groups of those people because those are the people that aren't going to get bored to shit of your bullshit. <laughs> and so I think that's one of the like one of the really damaging parts of orthorexia, if we take away all of the um, restriction stuff and we take away all of the physical things and we even take away a lot of the psychological things and just take it down to the social aspect, it places so many limitations on who you can be and what you can do, what you can say yes to. If your life and everything, all this importance is placed on is this healthy or not and the saddest part about that the saddest part is that nutritional science is so in its infancy that all of this stuff on what's healthy and what's not healthy it's all just suggestion at this point nutritional science really knows very little and when you consider that humans have been eating food since humans have existed and arguably done a better job when we knew less about what was supposedly healthy and not it's just really sad. It's really sad to me that I spent so much of my life, so many years, obsessing over what was healthy and what was not, when I really should have just been down the pub having a pint and a pie. God, I'm glad I'm not like that anymore. 
All right, I'm going to go and have a pint now. Bye.